Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about um, going through my egg donation process. Throughout like the past two years, I've gotten so many messages about um, what I went through, how I felt, the whole process and everything. So basically I'm going to be talking about that today. I will be going through um, all of the steps it took to get through the egg donation process. Um, how many times I've donated, how I felt, what the effects were, um, what the doctors told me, so things like that. And I will be going through all of that. Um, I heard of this because my sister actually works for the company that I went through, which is Houston Fertility Institute. And at the time, they were looking for more Asian women to donate their eggs. And if you did not know I was Asian, I'm only a quarter, but I am Asian. I'm Japanese. So I thought, why not? Um, by the way, I don't know what's going on with my hair today, but I just kind of went with it, so that's what's going on with that. So before you even think about donating, you do have to qualify for some things, so you do have to be in good health. Uh, you do have to do, be between the ages of 20 and 29, and you um, cannot be at high risk for HIV in the past 12 months. If you guys see me looking down a lot, it's I'm looking at the guide to egg donation. Um, and since my sister does work there, she did send me this. And I will link that in the comment section below so you guys can kind of read through it as well. So if you meet those qualifications, then you go through the first of two applications. So basically you go online and you go to um, hfi.ivf.com and tap to get started donor book and then donor application and you kind of go and fill that out. That's asking you your name, your height, your weight, your blood type, uh, your eye color, your hair color, you know, just basic questions like that. And they do ask you to upload a couple um, high quality photos on your profile. So obviously when people search you, they can look to see what you look like. They want them to be professionally done, but if you don't have any as high quality as you can. And after this video, if you do end up wanting to donate with the institute I did, um, obviously you can't put in my name as a referral. There will be a box when you fill out the donor application for who referred you. Um, since I don't work there, I can't really refer you, but um, my sister does work there. So you can just type in her name. Her name is Demi. After you complete your first application, um, with all of your basic stuff. Once you um, qualify for that, they will then call you and then have you, or give you a login for um, the donor website. And you'll basically log into there and you'll fill out a questionnaire. And that questionnaire is basically your whole family's medical history. So your mom's side, your dad's side, and then yours as well. After you finish that, they will give you a call back and then they will go over that with you again and then once you go through that that would be your second application so then you're basically good to go so once they get you in for that they will do a vaginal ultrasound um, to elevate your ovaries and blood tests to evaluate your hormones and current health status you also have blood drawn uh, to test for infectious diseases such as HIV hepatitis syphilis and urine tests for chlamydia and gonorrhea. Blood will also be tested for the presence of drugs and nicotine. Obviously, if that happens, then you're not gonna be a donor. Um, so you have to go through all of that after you start your menstrual cycle. After that appointment where they do all of that, they contact you um, a week later after your results come back and let you know if you're good to go or not. So if everything's um, clean, then they go ahead and start scheduling your doctor's appointments. And this is of course once your donor profile is up and active, they bring you into the clinic again and kind of go over all of the injections and what you're gonna be taking throughout the course of the donation. So, and then they also give you a calendar which looks like this. So this is just a mock calendar. Basically, it just tells you what day you're supposed to take what, and then at the bottom, um, 
there's the two injections that you're supposed to be taking and then where you're supposed to inject it. You do inject and they teach you how to do this obviously, but they you do inject it in your stomach um, below your belly button and your abdomen. And they do tell you if you don't feel comfortable with doing it yourself, you can have someone else do it. I just didn't want anyone else to do mine just because I don't know, I'm not scared of needles, so it didn't really bother me. Then go over all of the consent forms you're signing, um, go through all the risk of everything. I did get a lot of questions about if I could still have kids. They said it was very rare that I wouldn't be able to have kids, so yes, you can still have kids after you donate. They only give you um, six times to donate. I did all six. Um, Sometimes if you're a popular donor, you can do seven times. And at the end of my sixth one, they did ask me if I wanted to do a seventh one, but I honestly just did not want to go through it, all of it again. So I declined it. They do ask you to stay um, in the program until you're 30, because the cutoff is 29. Um, and since I've already done it six times, I can't, I obviously can't do it again. But if, you know, you only get like one donor every two years, then they'll contact you and let you know, hey, um, we have a recipient wanting your eggs, let's go through the donating process and things like that. So that's why they ask you to stay in it until you're 30. But <laughs> I was a very popular donor and I did all six of my cycles um, in about a year and a half to two years. So. It went pretty fast. It was like one after another I was doing. As far as the other risks, I'm just going to read them off the sheet I have right here. Um, and these are the possible side effects from using the hormones that they ask you to inject. Um, so the first one is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, um, which causes fluid retention, abdominal discomfort, nausea, and vomiting. Um, when severe, it can result in blood clot clots, kidney damage, ovarian torsion, and chest and abdominal fluid collections. And that requires hospitalization for monitoring. That obviously did not happen to me. I didn't feel nauseated. I did have some um, abdominal cramping, but I think that was just from um, the hormones and then injecting them in my abdominal region. And I didn't have any vomiting. Second one is ovarian torsion which occurs when the stimulated ovary twists on itself, cutting off its own blood supply and then surgery is needed. So they told me about this um, at one of my um, appointments. They told me if after you donate, they give you two weeks to not do any uh, strenuous activity because the ovaries are still enlarged. So it's very easy for them to twist. So they told me if I did do any physical activity within those two weeks, it could cause the my ovaries to twist and then I would have to have surgery. And then I could not have kids. So that's an important part to definitely listen to the doctor. And then obviously the risk of pregnancy. Since you are taking all of these hormones and you're very fertile, they do ask you to not have sex throughout the entire donation process, which um, leads me to their recommendations on the um, throughout the whole donation. So they do recommend you not have sex for the two months that you are on um, the hormones because it is very likely that you could get pregnant off of it. And obviously if that happens, someone couldn't get your eggs. So that would kind of be like a crappy thing to do to somebody. Obviously, not smoking, not drinking, um, and not doing any drugs because it kind of like it's kind of like you are pregnant with a child. You're just giving your eggs to someone else. So if you do drink, if you smoke, if you use drugs, that could affect your eggs overall, and then you're giving those to someone else. So they do ask you um, to not do that and act like you are pregnant. And obviously they recommend um, eating healthy throughout the entire thing since going into it they are looking for a healthy person. So they do recommend that you keep eating clean um, the entire time that you're doing this because a cycle does take two months. And then they recommend you also exercise on top of that. Um, 
I obviously was eating clean and exercising the entire time. The only reason that they would tell you not to exercise is after the um, procedure is over. And within that two weeks, they ask you not to work out. As far as the um, donation process goes, so day one of your period, you call your coordinator and then let him or her know that you've started your period and then they start you on the calendar that I showed you. Um, so it'll say day one of your calendar and they'll place you on birth control to control your hormones and then they'll start you on the hormone injections. Um, and what these hormone injections do is they stimulate your follicles, they enlarge them, and then they make your ovarian lining um, thinner so it's easier to go in and get those follicles and they give you they count how many boxes of the Brevel and Minipure they give you and then they kind of send it with you it's this huge brown bag of like all of these hormones that they send you with they put you on your schedule of when you're supposed to take what I believe almost every day I took one cc of each and um, they're at certain times too so some days I would be coaching and I'd have someone grab my class real quick while I would go in the bathroom and grab a needle like looking like a like a drug addict or something but I would just go in my purse grab my needle and you have to inject it in the like right time that they um, instruct you to because it is very time sensitive with this kind of stuff. Once you start your first injection, that's when they start you on your schedule of coming in to um, see how your follicles are doing. So they bring you in, do a vaginal ultrasound, they always get blood work done. And then um, I think most of the time they did a pee sample as well. And they're basically just trying to see how your follicles are doing on the hormones and they let you know whenever you're getting closer and you can definitely feel when you're getting closer to um, donating because my boobs got so big and they felt so sensitive I felt bloated all the time I did gain a little bit of weight and I think obviously that's from the hormones um, it wasn't like a ton of weight it just felt like I was a little bit chubbier or you know uh, fluffier I guess than what I usually was I was still working out but I was still also injecting the hormones I did have a bit of mood swings <laughs> I felt so bad for Chase because I was just kind of being a bitch almost all the time and I hated it I know he probably hated it and I think it was the worst when I did my first one because obviously it was new while you're injecting them if you have any questions to the coordinator about um, how much to inject or if you're not sure about something the coordinator is always there with you I had a coordinator who I was constantly emailing the entire time I was donating just if I had any questions if you are married then your husband also has to go in and sign consent forms as well I guess just to make sure that he's okay with you giving your eggs away to someone else but um, obviously since I'm not jeez I'm just kidding. They send you to the nearest hospital by you. So I went to um, one in Cyprus and they said I could go in and do things there. They have like a women's clinic there that I went to and did all of my um, appointments there. So they, they do find the closest hospital to you so you don't have to drive out of your way. But whenever you reach the point where you do your Lupron injection, which is one injection at a very specific time, um, usually I had to take mine at like 9.30. They do ask you to take that at a specific time and that um, matures your follicles to get ready for them to go in and grab them basically. So have you guys ever seen um, Friends with College? So there's an episode on there where she's trying to get pregnant and she's going through the IVF cycle and she's getting ready to take her Lupron shot for the night or I guess some of her hormones and her husband goes to inject them and drops the vial and it like busts all over the floor and she's having a panic attack she has to take in like five minutes 
So she like calls her doctor and like goes to see him at like the restaurant he's eating at. So she's going through all of that. Basically, that's what happened to me. Um, I was at Chase's house and I had like five minutes to take my Lupron shot, which was supposed to be taken at a specific time. And I had the vial of stuff and I had everything except the needle. And I was at Chase's house in Houston and I live in Waller. So I think what I did is we drove all the way here and when we got here I rushed in to take it. I was like 30 minutes late taking that. I don't know how that even worked and I was like really nervous to go in the next morning and tell them that but I ended up not telling them and they never even knew so that only happened one time but I suggest if you're traveling to definitely make sure that you have all of it with you it was a little bit of a hassle to do that but um that was a little bit stressful and that second injection of Lupron you take tw exactly 12 hours after you inject the first one that night you start taking your antibiotics they start you on and I think you take those for about 10 days, even after you have your surgery. And when they see that your follicles matured, then they call you in for your um, appointment. They do put you under anesthesia. They ask you obviously not to eat anything uh, before your appointment. Mine was usually at like 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. So it was really early. So I was thankful for that because I would have been starving by the time I got in there if it was any later than that. Um, and they don't, they ask you not to drink or anything after midnight, even that night. Surgery place is somewhere different than where you went to do your appointments. When I went to was downtown Houston, which at the time Chase was living in downtown Houston. So it was convenient. It was like 15 minutes from his apartment which was nice opposed to where I live like an hour and 20 minutes from there. I did have one time though, my friend Micah took me to my appointment at like six o'clock and we had to wake up really, really early and I was so hungry. But anyway, you, um, so you get to the clinic, they ask you to wear comfy clothes, no makeup, no jewelry, no perfume. Someone will need to drive you there obviously because you are being put under so you won't be able to drive after that. You won't want to drive after that. Um, the procedure takes about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes I think. Um, and I, the first time I did this I had never been put under anesthesia like ever. And they laid me down on the table and they put you, put your feet in stirrups. Obviously they have a blanket over you until you pass out so you're more comfortable. The first time I got put under, they had me count to 10 and I think I got to three. <laughs> and then I just woke up and the, I guess the nurse was like, wake up, wake up. And I guess I was sleeping like 10 to 15 minutes after I had gotten off the anesthesia and they were like trying to rush me out there like, please go. Birds, I They said that bleeding is normal um so they send you home with a couple of pads because they do go in so they go in vaginally with the probe and the probe has like a needle at the end so basically all they're doing is like looking at your follicles and basically like sucking them up um they are not supposed to tell you how many eggs they took because everything's obviously anonymous there's everything about you but you don't know anything about the recipient or how many eggs they took um, and that's why I think they tell you you can only do it up to six times. But the first time, I guess that the nurse was a little bit newer, so she didn't really know that she wasn't supposed to tell me that. And they said they took 21 eggs, which obviously are not all going to be fertilized. And as far as how I felt after the procedure, the first time it felt like a ball of needles just exploded in my lower abdomen. It was very hard to stand up all the way. I was still bleeding a little bit like the second day. The um, the pain went away for me for like after three or four days. They did ask me to 
take off work some of those days because I was a coach, obviously. So they asked me not to do any strenuous activity. But after like two or three days, the pain went away. So it wasn't like unbearable the entire two weeks. And then the entire two weeks, they ask you not to do anything strenuous. Obviously not to have sex because you are still fertile at that point. It was a long process. And then within five days, I got my check in the mail. If you want to know how much I got each time, I will have the um, this whole packet that my sister sent me. It has literally all the information I just told you plus more in this. Um, and I will link that down below just so you guys can take a look at it. Since I did do it six times as far as like long-term side effects that I had, I think that my acne got a lot worse when I did that. Obviously I was having hormonal acne, so I started having like cystic acne, which I had never had in my life. I would have a lot more mood swings, I felt like. I just felt like my hormones were everywhere and I, not even when I was on my period, I would just start crying. I would just get mad at Chase for no reason. And we fought a little bit during that time too. It was just awful, but I eventually got over that and I thought that that was still the case as of why I'm getting my acne now, but I did talk to a dermatologist and she said it could also be due to me being so active because that obviously messes with your hormones for whatever reason. I don't know. I haven't actually seen her yet. I just talked to her. But besides that, I don't feel like I had any more side effects, any bad ones anyways, like really bad ones. That was my ent entire experience with it. If you have If you have any other questions about how I felt, the surgery, anything really, you can comment it down below or you can just shoot me a message on Instagram or Facebook. And I hope this helped anyone that had any um, further questions to me about it. And I hope I covered everything. Like I said, I will um, link this down below and then I will put the um, also the link to the page down below and then I'll put Demi's name so you can put her in the referral if you decide to do this. But yeah, that is all I have and I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys! I love